Well, joining me now in studio is Oklahoma State Director of USDA Rural Development, Ryan McMullen. Well, I got to learn personally how spotty cell service can be a couple of falls ago when I had car trouble on Talamina Drive looking at the, the changing foliage and literally had to hitchhike because there was no cell service. Yeah, I, I think people certainly don't have a full appreciation of just how sparse the infrastructure is in Southeast Oklahoma. Uh, what we've seen through our investments in the Recovery Act is frankly Southeast Oklahoma um, of any region in the country has received more of those Recovery Act investments than, than just about any place, which is a success story in and of itself, but uh, the reason that all of those investments we've been able to bring to Southeast Oklahoma is because of the total lack of infrastructure in so many aspects that we've seen in Southeast Oklahoma. So when we talk about our partnerships with telecommunications communities to help improve cell reception, when we talk about those partnerships to bring high-speed internet to those communities, it's it's not a matter of you know improving speed or improving service. It's There's large pockets of Southeast Oklahoma that prior to these investments had absolutely no service whatsoever and had absolutely no access to high-speed internet whatsoever. And so um, these are really some, some investments that, uh, that are changing the face of Southeast Oklahoma. Yeah, and, and we're certainly focusing on Southeast Oklahoma today, but I've been with you over the past couple of years, and there's work going on around the state. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, through USDA, uh, just over the last five years, we have invested over $2 billion uh, in improving high-speed internet in, frankly, every single corner of the state. Uh, we have outstanding either cooperatives or locally owned uh, small telecommunication companies that, uh, that believe in the communities that they serve and, and are, are very prone to, to utilize USDA rural development dollars to be able to, to improve their infrastructure. But, but again, $2 billion just over the last five years, um, a, a significant amount of that, uh, even in the form of grant dollars, to be, able to, to be able to make these projects feasible in places where, frankly, you have uh, such a, a sparsely populated area and lack that population density to, to really always make those projects uh, economical. And I, I don't think we can say it enough. This is a public-private partnership, a lot of times with these community-based smaller companies that are bringing the cell service in. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's the questions I often get is, is you know, why, why haven't you, you know, why hadn't USDA brought these investments to, to my particular corner of the state? The It, it is a public-private partnership. And without that private partner there, and oftentimes the most likely candidate for a really good private partner for USDA funds is that small locally owned telecommunications cooperative. Again, these are folks that, you know, their executives live in the communities that they serve and uh, and they have a they have a very strong interest in uh, in providing the same level of service in those rural communities that uh, that our urban neighbors get. Mm -hmm. and, and the money that's being spent around the state, this comes from the Reinvestment Act? The majority of that $2 billion that uh, that I spoke of, uh, that came through Recovery Act dollars that uh, we've been finishing up the ribbon cuttings on, on most of those Recovery Act uh, projects here over the last year. Uh, but there are also other sources of funds that uh, the Congress appropriates on an, on an annual basis. There's a farm bill broadband program that has a has a, a significant amount of loan dollars that we have a lot of our small telecommunication companies apply for. We have a Community Connect program, which is uh, which is an exciting program that's that's all grant based. Uh, mm -hmm. That uh, again, there's an annual uh, annual awards that come to that, and and those are really for for very small communities, oftentimes kind of 100 to 500 people. That that as we talked about with Southeast. Oklahoma have absolutely no internet service whatsoever and we can partner with one of those telecommunications companies to provide to uh, bring those service lines into those small communities. Yeah and I think particularly important too the work that the president and and you've been doing with the Choctaw Nation. Absolutely absolutely you know the the Choctaw Nation is a shining example I guess of the new way that the federal government seeks to do business and, and uh, what we're talking about with the president's announcement in this uh, Connect Home initiative is, which is really based on some of the major investments we made through the Recovery Act down in Southeast Oklahoma. It's the realization, okay, USDA came in, partnered with Pine Telephone and some of our tele other cooperatives and, and small companies down there to put this infrastructure in. But the reality is there's still a lot of low-income people in Southeast 
Southeast Oklahoma that can't access that infrastructure that we put in place. And so there needs to be, you know, further steps that take place. And, and that's what's, you know, so exciting about this Connect Home is, is not just a single partnership like what we've seen with the USDA and these particular telecommunications companies, but also bringing in OETA and PBS to do some of the educational content, uh, bringing, in, uh, bringing in Best Buy to be able to go in and provide some technical assistance to these low-income units to, to help people figure out, okay, being on the internet is more than just setting up a Facebook account and, and chatting with your friends. There are lots of educational opportunities that are available and, and you know, if our goal, which certainly my goal and the president's goal is to try to break this cycle of generational poverty that we've seen in southeast Oklahoma, being able to uh, being able to connect to the rest of the world and the resources that exist outside of southeast Oklahoma is a critical part of that. And while certainly bringing broadband service is cutting edge, the work that USDA Rural Development is doing here is truly nothing new, something that you've been doing since the 1930s. Oh, abs absolutely. It's, it's, it's just the, the next generation from, from what we began with uh, um, our partnerships with locally owned and governed rural electric cooperatives for the first time to, uh, to bring electricity to, to, uh, uh, to homesteads and, and small communities that uh, frankly had been left behind uh, other parts of the other parts of the country had had electricity for 30 years, but it wasn't until that partnership between USDA and those electric cooperatives that, uh, with that public-private partnership, that finally were able to to provide that type of service. That was the same story with the rural water districts in the 1960s, and, and today is the next generation as we recognize that uh, that today access to high-speed internet, access to the global economy through high-speed internet, is frankly just as fundamental as electricity was in the 1930s and 40s and water was in the 1960s. Final question here. You've been state director now for about six years. Mm -hmm. Where do we go from here? Um, it, we, we continue to look for opportunities on assisting communities to take advantage of these significant investments that we've made. And bringing high-speed internet to a community in and of itself is not gonna turn around the economy of, uh, of that particular community. Frankly, what we see in Southeast Oklahoma is those places that we've flipped the switch and, uh, and have high, now have high-speed internet for the first time. Those places that have, some, um, that, that have some other assets going on for them, um, those are the places that you really um, suddenly you really see a lot of growth in that economy. Broken Bow is a, a perfect example in some of the um, high-speed internet availability that's that's available on the, along the lake. That's a place that people want to be. There's a, a thriving tourist industry and that sort of thing, which has improved dramatically once we were able to improve the internet speeds. We've got all of the the Texas tourists that come that have come up there that that frankly had been a little bit hesitant to want to completely disconnect when they come to Southeast Oklahoma for the weekend. Um, now it's a much more comfortable place for them to be. And, and you know you visit with business owners in in, uh, in the Broken Bow area, and, and time and time again you'll hear them that you know this providing internet to this community has been a significant boost to their to their ability to grow. Um, so Broken Bow is an example of a place that is able to is able to benefit from that. But it's it's working with those other communities to figure out what is your asset that you have, whether it whether it be a, a scenic asset, a, a, a cultural asset, some type of industry. Uh, that we can cultivate. It's, it's taking that next step to figure out what are some additional resources we can partner with a community on to really build off of this major infrastructure investment we've made. All right, Ryan, thank you so much for stopping by. All right, thanks, Rob. Now, if you would like to see more on the work USDA Rural Development is doing in the state, just head to okhorizon.com and look under our value-added section.